What did you get for T final? 20.77. Okay, I got 20.78, but that's just rounding error. Okay, good. In fact, yeah, I'll write 20.78. What, what's the units there? Celsius. Yeah, okay, good. So we got through that map. Here we have a negative sign, but when you move this to the right-hand side, it gets a positive sign. And then we just divide both sides by this number, 28.78 Celsius. And that's telling us this temperature over here. All right, that's telling us this temperature here. And as you predicted, the temperature is intermediate between the 5 and the 70, although it's not exactly halfway between them. It's not exactly halfway, but it's, uh, it's intermediate. Uh, between them. Whose temperature changed more? Um, the, the iron's temperature. Yeah, even though there was more of it, its temperature still changed more. And the reason is, it's a lot easier to change the temperature of iron than it is of water. It only takes about 450 joules to change the temperature of the iron, but it takes 4,000 joules to change the temperature of the water. So even though we have a lot more iron, its temperature still changed a lot more. Okay, well, this is the first temperature problem that we've done that we might, you might see on an exam. All the other problems we did were too easy. All right, even this might be a little too easy, but now we're starting to get into more realistic problems. So we're kind of seeing how to use the heating curve here. Although, like I said, maybe the heating curve doesn't work that well when you have two different substances. Because when you have two different substances, it doesn't quite make sense to have them on the same curve. But I don't know. I think, uh, I think we were able to do it anyway. Okay. Um, the key thing here is that if you've got more than one substance, the sum of the heat exchanges is zero. This is the key problem-solving technique that you need to have in your notes. If you've got more than one substance, the sum of the heat transfers is zero. Because anybody who's gaining heat positively must correspond to somebody else who's losing heat negatively. So the sum is going to have to be zero. You might even see some problems where you have many different terms here. But the sum of these heat transfers is always going to be zero. The sum of the heat transfers will be zero when you have more than one substance. That was our key. And we saw that since we were using the Q equals MCAT formula, we didn't have to figure out which of these Qs was positive and which was negative. The formula took care of that for us. Now, unfortunately, today, um, we won't have a chance to do this type of problem with this formula. Uh, to be more realistic, on a real problem, oftentimes you'd have to combine temperature change and phase change on the same problem. We haven't done any problems like that. But on a real exam problem, you'd be likely to have to combine temperature change and phase change on the same problem. And then you'd have to include this formula as well. And this has the dot, so for this formula, you'd have to decide which keys were positive and which were negative, because this doesn't do that work for you. So uh, we won't have time to do that. You might look at some of the examples in the textbook. They kind of show how to do that type of problem. All right, so that's the, the big thing that we didn't get to. We didn't show how to combine uh, phase change and temperature change in the same problem. But uh, we've gone over the basics, and maybe we'll get a chance to look at it in the future, or even maybe the examples will make sense to you uh, in the textbook now. OK, so uh, that's our basic approach here for heat. So the, the big things we went over today was the heat and temperature, and earlier we went over the ideal gas law, and hopefully you'll get a chance to, uh, to do some practice problems on that. Okay. Uh, remember, the first thing that would be good to do is just redo the problems we just did together. Uh, so I know you got another homework uh, assignment due, but even before you did that, if you have time, you just want to redo the problems we did together and make sure you can still get those right, because uh, those really went over some of the basic uh, ideas, and then hopefully the homework uh, will give you some more reinforcements. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks.